Still staying with politics, Nigerians should expect the emergence of more registered political parties before the 2019 general elections, and that's according to the chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. Professor Mahmoud Yakubu explains that the commission has received more than 100 applications for the registration of new political parties. He was speaking in Uyo, the Aquabum State Capital, on the sidelines of the induction retreat organized by INEC for resident electoral commissioners of the 36 states of the Federation. The 2019 general elections is just a little over 430 days away. And as political parties brace up for that challenge, so is the umpire. The Independent National Electoral Commission is meeting in Uyo, the Aquaibom state capital. Poorly conducted election is a recipe for chaos. Poorly conducted elections have led to civil wars. And so we must bear this um, at the back of our minds whenever we take decisions concerning elections. Another area that will greatly impact on our operations is the alignments and realignments of political parties and actors as we move towards the election. So far, the Commission has received over 100 applications from political associations seeking registration as political parties. The forthcoming elections may not be anything different for INEC, except for the need to put its house in order and ensure the process remains credible. It is important for us to have an accurate idea of possible locations of hotspots and peddlers of head speech. Discuss this with security agencies and examine ways to address them well before the election. So too is the disturbing incidence of the use of money to openly induce voters even on election day. The host resident electoral commissioner and the representative of the United Nations Development Program believe this retreat has more to do with planning for more deliverables. We've learned from our previous experiences working with electoral stakeholders at the national level that we need to do more to work with you at the state and local government level. Complementary and robust engagement will need to be upscaled at the state and LGA levels to engage in capacity building, training, monitoring, mentorship, technical support, and citizens' mobilization. The retreat is also coming just after the conduct of the very successful governorship election in a number of states. And so it's an opportunity for us to share experiences, to learn from what happened there as we prepare for the next set of elections. Whatever the outcome of this gathering is, Nigerians will be looking to see it translate to peaceful conduct of the general elections come 2019. And from there, we're moving to Abuja, where Linda Kibe has more news. Good evening, Linda, and how are you today? Now, the Minister of Finance, Mrs. Kemi Adyoshu, has defended the federal government's decision to suspend the former Director General of the Securities and Exchange Commission, Mr. Monir Guazu. Mrs. Adyoshun, who was speaking with reporters in Abuja, said the decision to suspend Mr. Guazu is in accordance with laid down rules and aimed at sanitizing the nation's capital market to protect investor confidence. She debunked the claim that the decision was to stall the forensic audit of Oando PLC. The Federal Ministry of Finance would like to place on record that Guazo's suspension is in line with public service rules to allow for an unhindered investigation of serious allegations of financial impropriety against him. And some of those allegations for which we have documented evidence include the award of contracts to companies related to him and members of his family. It should be noted that he was issued a query by the Ministry on November the 3rd and he responded on November the 7th. His response to the query was deemed unsatisfactory and we ordered further investigation. Based on evidence from that further work and creditable reports that documents were being unlawfully removed from SEC's offices and our consultations with the FCC, we took a decision that we would need to suspend Mr. Guazu. 
As part of activities to commemorate the 2017 World Anti-Corruption Day, a coalition of civil society organizations under the auspices of Say No Campaign are advocating citizen support for government's anti-corruption crusade. The campaigners insisting that Nigerians must partner with government by providing helpful information to anti-graft agencies that would lead to successful prosecution of corrupt citizens. The group is also advocating for an inter-agency collaboration to end the challenges faced in the anti-corruption fight. The biggest challenge to the anti-corruption fight right now is not just the, is not the renewed figure, but because there is no interagency coordination. You have inter, you have an interagency tax force, anti-corruption tax force, but they are not collaborating. They are not coordinating. They are fighting one another. A, and we think it is deliberate, because they know that if they coordinate, if there is synergy, then we would have more successes. But they are fighting deliberately so that you know cases. We, not, uh, we, we never get to court, or cases will never be successfully you know, uh, prosecuted. And so that's one of the reasons why we're saying that if corruption is going to be fought successfully, it is down to the citizens, down to ordinary Nigerians. It is not government. The ordinary Nigerians must make sure that we fight corruption to a standstill. My argument is simply that don't talk about selectivism. Talk about innocence. Plead your innocence. Don't talk about where you come from. Don't talk about persecution. And they are not taking you to a, a tribunal. They are taking you to a court of law. So if you are innocent, the court will set you free. If you are not innocent, you should pay the price. That's the, the thing. To continue to make the argument of selectivism, of, of uh, persecution, is the narrative of the corrupt. It's the corrupt that has that narrative. Every time you catch somebody, the rich especially, they become we begin to talk about presumption of innocence. Members of the Committee for the Defense of Human Rights have staged a peaceful protest in Abiyokuta, Yogun State capital, against calls for the scrapping of a special anti-robbery squad, insisting that rather than scrapping the outfit, it should be restructured to make it more responsible. The human rights group, led by its National General Secretary, Olayinka Folari, was backed by members of the Police Community Relations, committee members of the Motorcycle Riders Association, and members of the Peace Corps, and they marched through major streets in the state's capital to express their support for the operations of the police outfit and crime fighting. The Solidarity Support March is coming at a time when calls are being made for the scrapping of a special anti-robbery squad as a result of the alleged excesses of its men and officers in recent times. There is a new ray of hope for the people of Aguleri community in Anambra state, as the state government has completed construction work on the 280 meters Omambala bridge. The newly constructed bridge is the longest in Anambra state and will connect directly to the oil rig areas as well as help the agrarian communities in evacuation of farm produce. This has been the only means of transportation for residents of this community, the Aguleris in Anambra East local government area of Anambra State. But it may no longer be as they can now travel on this bridge, the Omambala Bridge, and they cannot conceal their excitement. <laughs> For the state government, the construction of this bridge is strategic. The governor had to do to open up the areas, create access through these bridges. And again, that's the food basket of Anambra State. Again, that's where Anambra State has the largest number of uh, you know, land. It will open up the agrarian areas. I'm happy now that a lot of people are buying lands and trying to start economic activities across that area. Now, the largest gas deposit is also in Ibari, I mean, this local government. That's the largest gas deposit in Nigeria and perhaps West Africa sub-region. So the governor has this, what you may call, vision. He knows where he's taking this state to. 
The focus is not just on this bridge, as the state government is also planning to complete the Eora Bridge in Anambra West local government area in four months. What we have done on the road this, uh, for uh, this uh, season, uh, around 30,000 cubic uh, meter of sharp sand. And now we are preparing for the dredger, sharp sand, to fill uh, another layer. And we are preparing now the uh, uh, asphalt uh, plant yard and the stock of uh, stone base. And as you see, the uh, pipe rank concrete for the uh, cross uh, pipe uh, uh, box calver, the uh, pipe rank calver. By the time these projects are fully completed, the state government might have found ways of making the people of Anambra state happy and have more confidence in the Obianos administration. The National Liquefied Petroleum Gas Association is campaigning for a safer, cleaner and healthier environment by using liquefied petroleum gas. This advocacy was at the 7th annual conference of the NLPGA with the theme running an LPG economy. The president of the association explains that the conference seeks to set the agenda for the role the LPG will play in the development of the Nigerian economy. It's the seventh annual National Liquefied Petroleum Gas Association conference and exhibition. Stakeholders, including regulators in the liquefied petroleum gas LPG sector, are here to deliberate on growth as well as opportunity for networking of local and international key players in the LPG industry. To note that the agenda of this year's panel sessions will cover a wide range of issues with regards to the development of the Nigerian economy, with, us, with the expansion of LPG usage, which includes governance, uh, that is institutional, commercial and fiscal framework, uh, industry structure, developing LPG resources, building LPG markets, developing national human resources, information awareness communications, and roadmap action plans. Given the immense potential in Nigeria's LPG sector, ways of harnessing the resources for the benefit of all Nigerians are highlighted. So introducing LPG into a community and ensuring that it's used and ensuring that it grows at a grassroots market immediately increases the quality of life of women and girls in those communities. And then a panel of discussion follows, emphasizing the need to ensure more participation on the new national policy on the LPG. From the point, even LNG itself does not make as much money as the last now person. In all, there seemed to be a consensus on the effectiveness of cooking gas for a clean, safe, healthy and conducive environment. With the president signing to 20% reduction of uh, greenhouse gas emissions, a whole lot of the deforestation and uh, desertification problems that you face in the country uh, will be solved using LPG because safety is a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a big concern for the industry. And have you seen from some of the incidents that we've had in the past, um, the regulatory agencies now need to step up uh, and the government is doing something about that. With this new advocacy called Cooking for Life, LPG offers a clean burning fuel used for cooking, heating and transportation. The global mandate is a transition of 1 billion people from traditional fuels to cleaner burning LPG by 2030. And NLPGA appears poised to assist in making this goal a reality.